She asked some good questions earlier when I was on the phone uh, coming down here to the NYC. Uh, don't have answers to all of them, but a couple of quick things for people to focus on. First of all, I don't know if you've seen, but the stock itself looks like it's going to be up rather nicely. Investors, at least in the early going here, prior to the market open, uh, responding positively to the idea that Mr. Culp will be both chairman and CEO of this company. Of course, he did have a very strong run running Danaher for quite, uh, quite a few years. So you can see there, we're talking about almost 14%. Uh, there it is, 14%. Again, let's wait till we see when we open uh, an hour and 12 minutes from now. Uh, but a couple of things for investors to keep in mind. Melissa, you'd ask, well, does this mean they might revisit the plan to break up the company uh, or go further than, of course, what was announced late June, uh, which was we're going to separate out health care and um, eventually sell down our, our ownership of, uh, of Baker Hughes, a GE company. That's actually what they say. Baker Hughes, a GE company. Uh, and the answer I'm getting right now is no. Uh, you know, Mr. Culp was a director when this plan was put into place, and the expectation is they're going to stick with the plan to separate health care and, and eventually the oil and gas business, but uh, may try to do it in a uh, speedier fashion. Uh, and that, in fact, seems to have been certainly one of the key problems that some of the board had with uh, Mr. Uh, Flannery, which was simply paralysis by PowerPoint, you know, kind of kinking and thinking and thinking, but not necessarily moving as quickly uh, as people thought needed to be the case, given the problems at GE. And they continue to be problems, certainly in power, with the $23 billion non-cash impairment charge. Now, much of that charge, I'm told, in fact, a majority of it, is due to that Alstom acquisition, which was under the leadership of Jeff Immel, and just writing it down, writing down the goodwill. Um, so there is that. Now, that had nothing to do with Flannery. Well, not nothing. He obviously was part of that deal to, uh, to bring Alstom in, but, uh, but that was under the leadership of ML. Another focus investors are going to want uh, to keep in mind here, we don't have any answers, we won't get them necessarily, is the dividend. Uh, you've got this impairment charge. Are you going to get a rating, rating agency downgrade? I think is a key question and therefore if you do get downgrades, does that mean you're in a position to maintain the dividend at currently its current uh, 12 cents, more than a 4% yield? That's something uh, I think the analysts are going to be taking a close look at. I know Stephen Tusa, the axe in the stock over at J.P. Morgan already this morning, thinks uh, that uh, the dividend could be cut. So let's keep an eye on the dividend. And then as for where we go from here, I mean, Culp doesn't even have a desk at this point. Excuse me, he doesn't even have an office. He just got sort of a desk, apparently. And, you know, it's going to be a little while until he gets himself fully settled there. I would point out he's the only director, I think, who bought stock back in, uh, back in the summer. I think he bought... $2 million worth of stock paid about 13 So he's still a little bit underwater, but doing better today with his own ascension as the chairman and hey, David, CEO. Was, Melissa, was over Larry to you. Brought, was Larry brought in by the Tryon team? You know, um, was Andrew, was that you? It yeah, was, it's right? a Andrew. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think that it was necessarily Tryon that was the engine behind this. However, uh, I certainly believe that they were fully supportive of it. How much of this was uh, activists promoted? Well, you know, Walter, I mean, Tryon is an activist. They're already on the board. Uh, there's no other activists who want to take a shot at this thing at this point. Uh, it's just probably too scary. So, uh, you know, I think this was the board acting on its own, uh, along with, of course, Ed Garden, who is the representative from Tryon, which has had a very hard time with this, uh, with this position for quite some time at this point. Um, but again, it seemed to be frustration on the part of some board members. Tom Horton certainly is taking over as lead director uh, amongst them with the rate and pace of change and the feeling that decisions needed to be made in a, uh, a much more quick uh, and, time And frame. Horton came on with Culp just this past April, so they're both new, That's right. right? That's right. In Does that, that mean there'll that be a in change April. in the strategic review they're doing? No, it doesn't appear that that's going to be the case. It appears they're going to stick with the plan uh, that was announced in late June in which you separate out health care and you separate out or you sell down the uh, ownership stake in, the, in, in Baker Hughes. But beyond that, uh, the, you just want to move more quickly. But it doesn't yeah. appear that they're going to, for example, uh, Walter, take a look at, well, could we really get rid of aerospace or things like that? They feel at this point they've got the businesses that they want in place that do work together. I mean, you, you know, jet engines and, 
and turbines for, uh, for, for electric generating facilities are very similar, as you know. So that's a lot of where the business is right now, and they felt like they did the bulk of the work with that decision to separate at healthcare. So we're not necessarily expecting, and, and Copeland Horton were a part of that decision, hey. by the way. So we're not expecting further Favorite. moves to separate. Are, are, are